Today, police officers are being targeted across the country as the riots rage on. We have got a lot to discuss, and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by America's favorite cowboy, Chad Prather, host uh, of the Chad Prather Show. Hello. Hello. With his villain mustache. It is. Turned up. I think you, do you turn, him up, do you turn it up when you're in a mood and then you just have it regular when you're not in a mood? I don't know what I'm doing, but this kind of <laughs> naturally curves and so I just started training that side and I just, it's terrible. No, I like it. It's a, it's a good look for you. Tell me more. Uh, Blaze TV contributor Josh Hammer back in the house. Sarah, I feel very outmanned by the redneck Fu Manchu to my right, but <laughs> I, will, uh, I, will do um, my, I will do my best to compose myself. So you'll appreciate I'm trying to grow out uh, my, my Guy Fawkes ma mask, right? I want to be anonymous. <laughs> And, of course, uh, the Blaze.com's own Aaron Cole. I'm very much losing the facial hair battle here, but here I am. <laughs> We've got uh, a lot to get into. So police officers, uh, first up, being targeted across the country. You know, we've all, not a stranger to these riots. We've been talking about it. It's been at the top of the news every day. But uh, Nevada, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Sheriff said that a police officer was in grave condition and on life support uh, after uh, he, he took rocks and bottles from the crowd. Iowa, a police officer was shot when officers were ambushed in their vehicle. Virginia, uh, Richmond police officers responded to a report of an armed person and they were fired upon when they responded to the scene. New York police officers were targeted in cities across the state by people shooting at them and drivers who drove cars into them. Uh, and an SUV rammed into a line of police officers near the Northeast District Police Station in Buffalo, seriously injuring two law enforcement officers. Um, so police officers targeted all across the country, Chad. I'm just <coughs> wondering what that exactly solves or proves. Well, it, it doesn't, obviously doesn't prove anything, doesn't solve anything. It, cr it exacerbates the problem. I, you know, these police officers, and we can talk about this over and over again. You've even tweeted about this and caught a lot of flack for it. There is a such thing as police brutality. There is a such thing as injustice. It happens. But you know what? There's also dog catcher brutality, right? There's trash man brutality. I mean, there's people who don't do their jobs well. Unfortunately, when it comes to police and people who are in authority, the, the repercussions and the consequences can be deadly. And when those things are shown with a spotlight, then you think that that represents the entire people. There are people, there are men and women out there that put on a badge, put on a uniform every day, kiss their family goodbye, and they just hope that at the end of the shift they get to come home to their families. This is, we're talking about not only dishonoring human life, but dishonoring this this position of authority that's there and putting the blame where it really doesn't belong. I don't blame the entire black community because mm -hmm. a certain subset group goes out and, you know, riots and, and robs the Nike store. You know, it's just not fair. And these men and women are trying to do their job. They're up against it. We heard um, um, Elijah Schaefer talk about it. He said they, SWAT in Dallas the other night, they honestly didn't know what to do. Yeah. They were in a situation that was brand new to them. Everybody was scared. And when you have folks on one side who are rioting or protesting, and you have another side that, that have, uh, you know, that are police and everybody's scared, that's not a good situation for anybody. Yeah. Josh, to Chad's point, um, you know, you have people who are protesting slash rioting, but you've got the, the, main, the main problem is supposed to be racial injustice, right? Racism, you look at it, it's a sweeping generalization made about a group of people. Isn't it the same thing and counterproductive to make that same sort of sweeping generalization about all police officers? So the short answer to that is, of course, yes. Um, Sarah, I, it's been a few days since I was on the podcast, since all this really got started yeah. in earnest. I, I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. Um, I, I am just so profoundly saddened. Just raw sadness is the emotion that always comes to mind when I watch this footage. We are literally watching the country descend into third world anarchy. I mean, what we are seeing, what we are reading about in New York, in Seattle, in L.A., Chicago... <laughs> Um, this is the stuff out of a, 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 out of a banana republic. Mm -hmm. it, it is fundamentally unfit for the greatest nation in the world. And it's just, 
it just makes me so sad at just a visceral level. But to your point, of course you're right. Um, you know, the same way that um, the same way that we said that, that Joe Biden's co comment to Charlemagne was racist because he was targeting or he was referring to black people as a group and not as an, an individual level, that's the exact same rationale as to why painting the police with a broad brush is here, there, and everywhere wrong. Because of course there are individual cops. Okay, I, I'm as pro law enforcement as I come. I've angered a lot of people on Twitter the past few days with my tweets because of that. Obviously, there are bad cops, okay? What happened to George Floyd is you cannot defend it. It is indefensible. And I've not seen a single person try to defend right. it, nor could he or she. By the way, silver lining of this whole mess, what's going on in the country, this reaction to George Floyd, the unanimity, how everyone's on the same page here and across the board condemning this, actually should be a nice silver lining. That's, okay. that's a good thing. That is very different, obviously, than the situation with Trayvon Martin or with Michael Brown, you know, in, in the former. There was a legal dispute in the latter. There was a factual dispute. That was the hands up, don't shoot, of course. Um, no, th there's no ambiguity here. Everyone condemns what happened in George Floyd. And, 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 and you know, what, hopefully we hope and pray that, that his family sees justice. But what's going on, we cannot let America descend into anarchy. You know, it, 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 it's almost... It's bitterly ironic in a weird sense. People throughout the Trump presidency have said, oh, he's a dictator, he's a fascist. There's, yeah. it, this is all coming to America. But it, it, what's happening actually is anarchy. It's the exact opposite of fascism. And in fact, if you look back <laughs> to American history, going back to Emma Goldman in the late 19th century and, and, and the Haymarket riot in Chicago, there's actually a lengthier history of anarchy in this country than fascistic tyranny. Um, so I was really happy to see what I saw from the president in that address yesterday. You know, I'm sure we're going to get to that. Um, but this has to be stopped and has to be stopped right now. It's getting really dangerous out there. Yeah, yeah, the first thing I think about when it comes to these attacks on police is that it's not, it's no longer a race thing involved in that because there are cops of all races out there that are being put in this position to where they're thrown into these protests and they're supposed to protect people and they're supposed to keep order and they're supposed to try to stop the bad people while being attacked. And all. It's, it's not a race issue. It's just people are being hurt by this. There's collateral damage. There are innocent protesters being hurt. There are innocent cops being hurt. And so it just goes to the point that we really have to clear the streets out and stop letting this happen. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, it gets to the point where you say, well, maybe the peaceful protesters need to find another <laughs> way to demonstrate because they have been overtaken by these riots in a way to where they're endangering themselves by being out there. And it's unfortunate that you would tell people to stop protesting in a legal and peaceful way for that, but you don't want to see them be hurt. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think about is that the coverage of these riots that comes because they're so terrible and they're so widespread, it takes away from what we should be focusing on, which is holding the police departments accountable and looking into making sure that uh, the practices in those places are sound and that the uses of force are justified and things like that. Looking at Ahmaud Arbery, looking at Breonna Taylor, looking at these situations mm -hmm. and making sure that everything is, you know, the pressure is being put in the right places to where bad cops are being moved out, to where systems are in place to hold people accountable, and to make sure that trust is built in these communities. But the resources of the media and of our attention are not being put toward that because now we're looking at <coughs> riots in the streets and people being killed, and that's unfortunate. So, uh, Aaron, when I, I, obviously I support people's right to peacefully protest to the fullest extent. I, I, that's, you know, there's no issue with that. I don't think that anyone thinks that there's an issue with that, but, do you find that it is taking away from the real problem of police brutality as a whole to turn it into a racial thing, a white versus black thing? Because I haven't seen any evidence to actually indicate that this particular situation with George Floyd was motivated by race. Yeah, it can be. And I'm I'm not going to be one to discount the, the feelings people have about right. the way that uh, laws may be enforced disproportionately in certain communities versus others. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is true that it is a police problem. It does happen to people of all colors where these laws get enforced in ways with excessive force and violence that they shouldn't be. Uh, and so we don't want to lose sight of that. I agree with you on that. But at the same time, I think it should be heard that uh, people in a predominantly black community feel like their police department doesn't have their back. They feel like their police department is not treating them fairly. That has to be addressed. Even if you don't agree. Whether or not it's true. Even if you don't agree that yeah. that's the case, you, it's not going to work if the community does not trust the people that are enforcing the laws. And so that, mm -hmm. that, that can't get lost in the conversation, even if it's not the whole conversation. Yeah. Chad? Well, if you want to have authority in life, you got to be under authority. And if you keep rejecting authority, sometimes somebody's going to put you under authority. I mean, that's just a general rule of life. Uh, I appreciate what you said about that. You, you have to be able to, I mean, the last time I checked, 
black people can go fill out an application and, and do everything that it takes. And they can they can have an occupation as a cop. Since when? Right? They, I, mean, they can, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, they can go. They can have a career as a cop. Yeah. I don't know who would want that job. God bless those of you who do it. Seriously, but. Um, well, can I just can I just really quickly? I mean, yeah. they do. And we have seen instances of police brutality that it's a black officer who's doing it. Happened in Mississippi Doesn't get just any last of the week. same coverage or protests. Happened in Mississippi just last week right. where, you know, a black officer choked Choking out. Choking a young man. Young black man. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, when last week, whenever we were talking about this and, and you, before the show, pre-production, you said, well, uh -oh. let's show the video. And I said, can we please not show yeah. the video? Yeah. We wound up showing a picture of the thing just as effective. I had to watch the video again today. It breaks my heart to see this video. It's not because he's a black man, a white man, or a white man doing it to a black man. It, this is a human man. Yes. And it breaks my heart to see this because it's unnecessary. You know, I have my conspiracies that are out there that are neither here nor there. It doesn't do anything to help the black community. But back to my point, if you want to have authority, you got to be under authority. But it's hard to trust authority if you don't trust the authority. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be in that situation. And I think I said it on the show yesterday. There's a, there's, there is a group of people in America who feel like they don't have stock in the system. And therefore, they don't, when the system betrays them and there's injustice like this, they feel like, well, let's burn that system down because that system hasn't done anything for us. Is that a right mindset? I, I'm not going to say yes or no because I'm not in that mindset. I could tell you that if I lived south of the border, I'd be doing everything I could to try to get my family here mm -hmm. into America. And I could say that if I lived in the, in the projects or in the ghetto of South Chicago, I'd be doing everything I could to get myself up. But how hard is that to do that in America today? You know, we're 70 years past Jim Crow laws. Uh, we're not very far. We're not very far. There's been some very good things that have happened progressively in the last 60, 70 years. But then there's some things that I think we do need to work on. Yeah. And I say that as a white man from the South who's taken a 23 in me, and I'm 100% white. <laughs> Gosh, last word on this one. Could have fooled me, Chad. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Cheers. Look, I, I, I think Aaron's point is a really, really important one, okay? Um, now, it, it's an interesting factual debate as to whether there actually is systemic uh, racial disparity in police force across the country. Uh, Heather McDonald of Manhattan Institute today has, a, has an op-ed at the Wall Street Journal purporting to show that there is not systemic racial disparity. I, I, I think the data probably does support that from my yeah. own perspective. That's but I, I think Aaron's point is important, which yeah. is that th th it doesn't actually matter, okay? It, when you have 10 to 15, I, I think blacks are roughly 13% of the American population. When you have 13% of the American population um, that, and obviously not every black feels this way, and a lot of whites feel this way, but a large percentage of the American population that feels like there are two systems of criminal justice enforcement, right. mm -hmm. That's unsustainable. It, it, at, at that point, it doesn't matter what the facts tell you. When you have that disparity in how people subjectively feel, we have to address it. We need to talk about it. And like, we, we can't be afraid to talk about why that is, solutions. Everything should be on the table, everything. Conservatives traditionally have oftentimes shied away from this. We cannot shy away from it anymore. Like, right. it, it, so, no, no, no. So, so, okay, so you said let's not shy away from it. Let's talk about solutions. So I guess my, my biggest question is how do you solve the problem if we're unclear on what the problem really is, right? If you have, let's just say, for instance, you have conservatives on this side saying, it, this is very clearly not a racial, racially motivated, racially charged incident. You can't assign race to this. And you've got another community, as Aaron mentioned, that's saying, we feel like it is, right? And you, and you don't have the evidence to support that. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but they feel this way regardless. How do you, how do you come to a solution if we're unclear, if we can't get on the same page of what the problem is? So, I, we need, I mean, we need mass hearings in Congress, um, yeah. presidential commissions, every, everything of that nature, of, like, of that lofty nature that we've done throughout our history when there has been a grave societal wide crisis. All that kind of stuff has to be on the table. We need all voices together, and we need to just have, an, we, we need to have a dialogue. I mean, that sounds kind of trite, I realize. I mean, you know, people kind of say that all the time, but like, we literally need that. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to happen on Twitter. It's not going to happen with everyone spewing invectives everywhere. It should happen, ideally, again, Congress is so bitterly divided on every issue, but it's, it theoretically in our constitutional structure should be happening in congressional committees. It should be happening in presidential commissions and things of that nature. 
Um, and, you know, look, I, I just want to emphasize again what I said earlier, which is this is a good moment to launch that sort of dialogue because everyone is on the same page as to the gross injustice that exactly. happened in this instance. So this theoretically <laughs> is very different than a lot of these other situations that we've seen where people are divided on the facts or the laws to what happened. No one's disputing either of those two things here. Yeah, Aaron, I want to give you last word on this. Yeah, and this is an opportunity to do that, and that goes back to these riots and why they have to stop because we will lose that opportunity if we focus on this, all this other sideshow that's going on mm -hmm. and not on taking this this opportunity of unity where we all see a problem and addressing the problem. So I hope that this gets fixed soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a lot more coming up. First, we want to thank our sponsor, iTarget Pro. We're talking about all of these riots right now. Okay, and uh, you know, they're coming to the suburbs. There, what, there was just a, a, a protest in Frisco out here in the suburbs, not where you would expect. So if you have a firearm and you're concerned that uh, people are rioting around you and you want to make sure that you are in practice with your firearm, iTarget Pro is how you do it at home. It is one of the coolest ways to dry fire train with your gun. You use their app that you download to your phone and they have a laser bullet and it's as cool as it sounds. Uh, it's very convenient and it pays for itself. It will save you a ton of money on ammunition and range fees. Dry fire will of course develop muscle memory, help with target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, uh, way more than even that. And iTarget comes in all the major calibers so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. Hey, we've got a Father's Day special right now. Get 10% off plus free shipping. All you got to do is use offer code NEWS. Uh, again, if you guys are, are nervous, maybe this is your, your wake-up call. Crap, you know what? I really need to remember to start training with my gun. You got to go there. Take advantage of this special. It is itargetpro.com. That is itargetpro.com. Offer code NEWS. itargetpro.com. Uh, Bill de Blasio, uh, he was going through this very long press conference today, and it was pointed out to him by a reporter, uh, which I, I know has been pointed out by several people, at least by Chad Prather uh, sitting here at the table, that, hey, we have we just were told, what, last week, that we're not supposed to have these large gatherings. People who were protesting the lockdown orders uh, were told that they were literally going to kill people. Now we don't hear that. Uh, so the protester said that... Um, you know, uh, what about the people who still are not allowed to gather for religious gatherings? They're still not allowed to go to church. What about them? Uh, he said, uh, are we in a pandemic or not? And do we have one set of rules of protesters and another for everyone else? Here is a little bit of Bill de Blasio's response on that. When you see a nation, an entire nation simultaneously grappling with an extraordinary crisis seated in 400 years of American racism? I'm sorry, that is not the same question as the understandably aggrieved store owner or the devout religious person who wants to go back to services. This is something that's not about which side of the spectrum you're on. It's about a deep, deep American crisis. We have never seen anything quite like what we've seen in the last few days. This is a powerful, painful historical moment. I mean, it, it seems to me that it is about what side of the spectrum you're on, because if you're on the side of the spectrum that the government approves, then you're allowed to go out and do your business. If you're on the side of the spectrum that the government does not approve of, then you're screwed. Where am I missing? Churches and synagogues, not approved. Okay, Bill de Blasio said, we'll shut you down permanently, mm -hmm. right? I just couldn't get over Weird Al Yankovic or what, whether that was uh, Penn Jillette up there doing the sign language who was so animated. <laughs> it is like bizarre. Was, it's something that I haven't noticed until this coronavirus. I think they're selling it more now because they're, they're getting really attention. Really they must come be. Yeah. I've never noticed it before. I'm like, geez, they're animated <laughs> up mean, there. It's like, uh, uh. <laughs> anyway, it's enough about all that. Uh, this, and this is all I'm going to say on this, this topic. Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo are the worst governor-mayor combination that the his, in the history of New York, possibly in the nation. These guys are an absolute farce. Mm. It's a joke. Bill de Blasio, well, his daughter's not going to be social distancing in jail, <laughs> right? right? Because they just picked her up. So do, I say clean your own house, dude. Mm. And let the rest of us deal with America. Yeah. What do you think, Josh? Sorry, it is impossible to describe the utter train wreck that is Bill de Blasio as a mayor and, yeah. and as a human being. Um, I mean, Give it a shot. I mean, he, he's, <laughs> Come on I with it. I feel like he will. His, his <laughs> approval ratings have been just been catastrophically low since the day he was sent to office. Now, Bill de Blasio, his real name, by the way, it's, it's like... A, 
something Will it, it's Wilhelm. It's something very German. It's yeah. like Wilhelm German, something yeah. the third. Yeah. He literally changed his name as a way to try and expiate his white guilt. I mean, he's been preaching this. I, I'm literally not making that up. Yeah. He's, he's been he's been preaching this narrative. He's been living this narrative his entire life. If I'm not mistaken, when he went when he was a, a, inaugurated, when he went to New York's mayoral office for the first time, City Hall. I think this is right. I hope I'm not wrong and the viewers don't say so in the comments. I'm pretty sure he literally forcibly took down the portraits of former white mayors like Ed Koch and all the other white mayors who preceded him. I could be wrong about that, but I definitely heard that at the time. In any event, I saw a headline even earlier today saying that Andrew Cuomo called out Bill de Blasio for his reckless handling of what was happening in New York City last night. When you've angered Andrew (laughs) Cuomo and you've you've done so from the left, then you are just at that point like a full-blown Marxist. I mean, mean, which Bill de Blasio is. He is a Marxist obviously but look he's terrible at his job okay but what's going on here is he's, is worse than sheer incompetence this is like I, chad mentioned the permanent closing church and synagogues comment which to me was just rank animus was malice yeah. um was was hatred of the faithful um and by the way here when he's talking about 400 years of systemic racism that's a not so subtle shout out to the new york times 1619 project by the mm-hmm. way that, that's exactly what he's doing there he's giving them support um, which, That's a good point. Yeah, the 1619 project has, has been criticized by scholars across the entire spectrum. It's a, a lot of oh, historical garbage, yes. obviously. A historical garbage, I should say. Um, Number one ranking podcast is out there, typically, whenever they're doing episodes. Yeah. Yeah, no. That is a good point. Yeah, thank you, Chad. Every, every so You're often, welcome. Every so, every so often I make one. I'm working on being a dear friend. <laughs> Not like that Jesse Kelly bum. <laughs> there was so much skepticism about coronavirus and all these rules about not being able to go outside. If you, right. were on the, if you were on the edge of that and you were like, I'm not really sure about that, this has to sell you completely because they're mm-hmm. just letting nice. you go out and do whatever you want. And he's sitting there because he wants to play, he likes to play the race card and sort of say, I got a black son, got a black wife and things like that. So he, these protests are race based. And so he's going to support that, even though it's totally contradictive to what he's been saying this whole time with the churches. And how many times did he get on Twitter and issue like warnings to Jewish people who are trying to have funerals and things like that? I mean, he was on this thing where you can't have 15 people gathering for a funeral or something like that. And now here he is, you know, his own daughter's out there and he says he's proud of her for going out to protest and breaking these rules. It just doesn't make any sense. Omar, she's proud of her daughter, too. I mean, they don't they just kill you. I'll tell you. Warren Wilhelm Jr. I had to there look is. it up. There Warren it Wilhelm. He's six foot five. Do you know that? Yeah, he's, he's a, big a giant. He's a big old boy. I've never heard one person say a good thing about him. Like not one person. Nobody. I mean, Glenn, Beck, Glenn Beck were here. He would talk about Bill De Blasio having been a New York resident. You've been a New yes. York resident. Yeah. I mean, the guys. White liberals in New York can't stand him. I'm pretty sure his approval rate is not very high among Black and Hispanics either, though. I mean, like no one so, likes this guy. Well, how did he get to where he's at? <laughs> lack, lack, lack of competition. How do, I mean, how does somebody go to Congress or lack the of, Senate in 40 years? They come out in $120 million. I, mean, I know, but as Josh pointed out, he like they basically immediately had regret. Right? As, well, soon, as soon they, as had, they elected they, him, no, they, they were like, oh, Morris. what have we done? They had buyers and Morris pretty quickly there. Yeah. Um, but, you remember how uh, the mob put JFK in office and then suddenly, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> How Bobby Kennedy went after the mob and somehow JFK wound up in Dallas in November of 1963. Conspiracies are next. Chad, segment. you are like <laughs> killing me with these conspiracy theories. But they did. The mafia, uh, because of Joseph Kennedy, they were behind him, right? And then Bobby Kennedy goes after the mafia. Yeah. And of course, anyway. Okay, Bill de Blasio. That's, that's how that happens. I, mean, I just cannot fathom the mindset of someone who purports to hold him or herself as a good American, who can say the kind of things Bill de Blasio just said in that. He's, I mean, Bill de Blasio's modus operandi, apparently, is he will vociferously defend your right to smash windows, yeah. to go up and down yeah. and smash windows in an anarchist fashion, but will round up the Jews when they want to pray in public. That is literally the prioritization of Bill de Blasio's, Bill de Blasio's skewed, immoral, disgusting moral and political calculus. Um, he's a menace. He's frankly a menace. Yeah. Uh, well, as the uh, the menace. looting was going on across the country, a man who was apprehended by police in Los Angeles, uh, <laughs> he was getting arrested for looting and, I guess, trying to steal money and just kind of admitted, like, I mean, you got to respect this level of just complete truth and honesty. Watch. All right, man, we saw you at the New Balance store. Why are you out here? Uh, man, period, point blank, just like all my real ones trying to do, trying to get some money. Explanation, that's it. I'm trying to get some dough, that's it. Just out here for the money? Yeah, pretty much. Anything to do with the protests, what happened in Minnesota? I mean, a little bit to do with that too, you feel me, but not really. I'm out here for the dough. Was it worth it? 
Obviously not, I'm out here hemmed up. Yeah, y'all see it? Man, if y'all gonna get some money, do it right. Don't do it the dumb way, do it the smart way. Man. Thanks for your time, man. The biggest thing I see right there is, look how relaxed he is. Like, he just yeah. got arrested for looting, and he's just kind of like, man, you know, I tried to do it. He's been well, there learned, before. Yeah, he learned that's, a lot. that's the most amazing video I've seen this entire ordeal. <laughs> Great, I know. No, I've got one better for you. Uh, I'll show you in a little while. The, the, uh, when you have one sideburn tattoo on your face and you need to complete the set, you got to go get your monies. <laughs> that's what the real ones do. That's, that's what, what the real, real ones, ones do. do. No, but Aaron, I feel like this speaks to your point of, if this is what we've turned the protests into, you're going to completely but I mean, lose. Yeah, the we idea. saw it even from the beginning in the Target in Minnesota. People just running in there, grabbing lamps and clothes, and it's like th there's yeah. a majority of the people out there doing that are just like, here's an opportunity to come get some free stuff, and they don't know what's going on with the protests. They don't care. It's just people taking advantage, and you know they're not as honest about it as this guy is. But they're yeah, doing they're it. Real, I mean, he's Appreciate so honest. The honesty. Right? You Appreciate have to the respect honesty. it at least. Uh, like, uh, what? Are you sure this isn't tied to George Floyd at all? You sure that's Ima your final answer? Imagine feeling just comfortable enough to be interviewed on television after you get arrested and just kind of talk about your mindset and what you're going through there. And yeah. I mean, it's, I wouldn't be one to do a Fox interview when you're I was like, bro, this but... ain't Jerry. <laughs> you ain't on Springer, man. Yeah, he's like, are you sure it's not about George Floyd? I mean, kind of, but not really. No, you got me. I admire the candor, though. Right? I know. He uh, chose the New Balance store, not the Nike store. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm not a fan of New Balance, but that's just me. American made. We've got a lot more coming up next, but first we want to thank our sponsor of this segment, Patriot Mobile. Uh, you know, we're, we're really hard hit right now when it comes to the economy. We've got, uh, you know, the, the coronavirus epidemic that happened. A bunch of people were laid off. Uh, now we've got all of these looting and race riots. Patriot Mobile is here to help right now by lowering their prices even further. Uh, right now, they have got customized family plans starting at only $25 for those of you who are looking for ways to cut costs in your uh, your your home life and your bills right now. Patriot Mobile also shares your values. They are not going to charge you hidden fees. And also, as an added bonus, they're not going to take the money that you send in for your bill and then send a portion of it to like Planned Parenthood and other leftist causes that you are spending time and energy fighting against. You will get the same reliable nationwide service and support a company that shares your values, supports our constitution, and puts people before profits. Now, it's 2020. Switching is super easy. You can keep your phone number. You can keep your phone if you want, or you can buy a new one if you're ready for a new one. Right now, you can get free activation and a free gift if you use offer code NEWS. All you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash news. Get that customized family plan. Again, it's starting at just $25. If you are looking for a way to cut costs right now, times are tough. This is a great way, and you can support an American company who believes in the values that you believe in. Go to patriotmobile.com slash news. Offer code NEWS. That is patriotmobile.com slash news. Uh, it is, as we were discussing during the break, it is Blackout Tuesday, hashtag Blackout Tuesday, I believe that it's called. And we were kind of talking off air. First of all, fix your tone and have some respect for the <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is it, Aaron's it's like? It's very harsh I don't and know. edgy. I don't know. Yeah, so you're supposed to uh, post a, a blacked out picture on your social media, I guess, or else you don't care about okay. black people. Uh, you, Apple Music is what only streaming, only streaming BLM pro BLM music. I don't even know what that means. Okay. What is pro BLM music? Uh, like Dead Prez. They were playing Dead Prez a little while ago. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to look at this table first of all. Hispanic woman. Mm -hmm. Well, I've I've been told that I'm white passing, so I don't count. White male, mm -hmm. Jewish male, mm -hmm. black male. Yeah. Okay, I'm over. I, I made this decision this morning because I've really wrestled with this whole how do I honor, you know, I, I'm not doing a hashtag Black Lives Matter. Um, I, it's not that I don't believe Black Lives Matter. I believe, as they say, all lives matter, right? Forget the cliches, forget the hashtags. Hashtags have conditioned us to think a certain way. Uh, we, we've been a, we've been like Pavlov's dogs. They ring that bell, and we were supposed to respond to it. CNN actually came out with an article today that said that doing that on your Instagram or your social is actually bad for the for the algorithm because protests are still going on, and hashtags are one of the way that they're co making sure that people are staying safe out there. And if you're using those things, it's actually messing up the whole algorithm deal. 
I'm overusing person of color. I'm over it. I believe that that is one of the media's or the man's way of keeping us divided. I'm a color, you're a color, we're all a color, everybody's a color. I've never seen a white man, never seen a black man. I've seen a lot of puces. I've seen a lot of mauves, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, some pinks, some, some edgy tans. I've seen some weird stuff. I've seen some splotchy stuff. But you know what? I'm over it because that is, stop being di divided. Your skin color, your melanin is 0.00016% of the genetic difference between the four of us sitting at this table. Now, culturally, prejudicially, see, there's racism and there's prejudice. Prejudicially, there's different things. Growing up in Augusta, Georgia, we had East Boundary, and we had Tobacco Road. If I said East Boundary, you knew that was the black folks. If I said Tobacco Road, you knew that was white folks. And then white folks, I didn't want to associate with them either. <laughs> Right? Because, and then somewhere in the middle, there was black folks, white folks, Asian folks, Hispanic folks. Might have even been some Jewish guy. But let me tell you something. I think he ran the shoe store or the jewelry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> where's, all, where's, but, all, where's Augusta National? <laughs> yeah, somewhere in the middle. Uh, they, they finally let black folks in there. Look, my college roommate, uh, University of Georgia, uh, Burt Rosenthal, he wound up being the president of the, the Jewish fraternity there. And, and let me tell you, my wife to this day, I'll be like, well, yeah, well, they're Jewish. And she's like, how do you know that? I'm like, man, I can spot Jewish people from 40 yards I, I, because I have, they paraded through our apartment. Like, I mean, the whole Jewish fraternity was in there, right? And my best friend, Sam Joseph, was a little black soccer player for Georgia. He's a bodybuilder. And he'd come home with me on the weekends because he didn't have a home to go home to uh, on the weekends. And, we, and so you, you, you grow up in this deal, and she's like, man, that was never a concept to me. But now I'm guilty of what? Of what am I guilty? I'm not. So I see you as a friend, you as a friend, you as a friend. I love you guys. Y'all are my family. And to have that thrown in my face consistently because I'm a white heterosexual Christian male that wears a cowboy hat and you won't think I'm a redneck, that's a ploy to make you guys get all weird and forget the fact that I'm spitting truth. Mm. That's the facts. Well, so I'm done using the phrase person of color. That's stupid. If you're a black girl and you're pretty, I'll kiss you. <laughs> Racism has been solved. <laughs> what do you even follow that with? You know? I know. I'm not really even sure. But I, to your point, Here, here's the, the thing, hashtag Sarah. doesn't solve anything. It doesn't solve anything. And, and here's the thing. People say, we want you to listen. Yeah. Okay, I'm listening. And I, and I am probably, this is what I started to say during the break. I am more sympathetic with the black community through this whole thing right now than I've ever been in my life. Okay? I'm listening. But at the same time, you want to have an honest conversation. An honest conversation requires truth, and truth is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So let's be truthful. So I, will say, I will say when it comes to listening, one thing we have to stop doing is listening to the bad actors and the people who act exactly. badly. Because a lot of times people from black, white, whatever, they come to the conversation. A black person who comes to say all white people are racist and tries to accuse people and generalize, that's not helpful to the conversation. But there are people who are really trying to have those honest conversations yeah. and who are trying to address it in a way that's not villainizing people, Great but point. that's trying to elevate people. And we have to try to find those conversations. <clears throat> and sometimes it's easy to get caught up in engaging with the bad actors and the people who are not looking to help but who are looking to stir up division. Well, a lot of times the bad actors are the ones who are being, you know, propped up Elevated. on, yeah, mm -hmm. on yeah. CNN. Because I'm conflict, saying. conflict sells in the media, and that's mm -hmm. why we get that thrown on our face so much. Well, think about how much money the media is making right now. Right. That's right. Perverse, yeah. perverse incentives left and right. So I'm still trying to figure out what pro Black Lives Matter music. That's what. Means. Thank you. That itself seems really racist, doesn't you it? You listen yes. to it for a minute, you'll figure of, it out. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, just a quick point, though. Um, the problem, and this is kind of the flip side of Aaron's point, Black Lives Matter is not just like a Twitter hashtag. I, I admittedly have not been to the website in about a year or two, but the last time I was there, it's like an actual website with an actual organization. People like, like run this organization. Black Lives Matter as an organization takes stances on issues that have nothing whatsoever to do with anything we're talking about. For example, amongst my Jewish friends, it's very popular to note that Black Lives Matter is vehemently anti-Israel. Yeah. They, they support the Palestinian from the river to the sea narrative, otherwise known as throw the Jews into the sea, like Israel is like a racist apartheid state, whatever. And that's just one example. They take issue on all sorts of stuff that has nothing whatsoever to do with police brutality, with what happened to George Floyd or any of these other instances. And 
the people who run that organization are really, they're shooting themselves in the foot, like, uh, no pun intended, obviously, but they're really doing a disservice to them because they're not focusing on what we as a country, as we've said repeatedly on this podcast, are here to discuss. It's one of my biggest frustrations is that Black Lives Matter has been just hijacked in that way. It's not just them, though. It's every single leftist agenda that comes out. It starts with something that's good, right? Like the Me Too movement. It's great if we can uncover really bad sexual assault. Yeah, I don't want women to get sexually happening. harassed right. and raped. That's great, but they've, they've been hijacked by these radicalists who want to turn it into this other movement. Women's March, same thing. Right. Uh, it's same thing. I want to be able to say Lives Black Lives Matter and not have people get worked up like, oh, it's I political. Was I, I was want to be able to God, say it this because morning, I believe it. You know? I was conflicted. I was like, do I turn my Instagram deal to a black thing? I mean, like, right. and I'm like, no, because... Ultimately, to do that, I'm caving to an agenda. You don't have anything to prove, right? Like, I, I wasn't well, ever yeah. a racist. To I'm not to a prove white that guy not. that needs to kiss your black ass in order to make you well, think I'm now. woke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't need to appear woke to you. Yeah. Yeah. In order to Speaking do that. as the black man at the table, it will not help me if you find your <laughs> profile picture black. It won't help me. It, right. won't, it won't do it anything for me. It does nothing right. for you, and it doesn't bring George Floyd back from the dead. Yeah. All right. Uh, really good conversation here at the table. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor this segment, Rough Greens. If you are a dog owner, uh, you probably, you know, you want the best for your dog. I'm sure you, like, spend a lot of money in uh, the dog food. Maybe you're checking the labels, like me, because I'm a crazy person, and I check the labels on literally everything that I buy if it's food for my dogs, for my kid, for myself, whatever the case may be. But if you're buying this food, this dry dog food, and you're spending a lot of money on it, you're not realizing that all of this stuff that you're reading, you think that you're giving your dog the best. You're not. All of the dry dog food, they've killed everything that's like alive and good in it that your dog needs to live a long, healthy life. They're sterilizing it to give it a long shelf life. So you're not getting any of those good results in the food. But lucky for you, there is Rough Greens. It does not replace that food. It's not a dog food. It just is a supplement that you sprinkle on top of the dog's food. It contains vitamins, minerals, digestive enzymes, probiotics, omega oils, antioxidants. It gives your dog everything it needs to live a healthy, long life. It improves mobility and joint health. And also the dogs love it. They gobble the food right up. So if you have a really picky eater, this is also a really, really great thing to put on them. My dog, I have a Doberman, and she does not ever want to eat. I sprinkle the Rough Greens on top, and she actually eats, and I know that she's getting what she needs to thrive. You can take the Rough Greens 14-day Jumpstart Challenge today for $14.95. You will see the difference in your dog in 14 days or less. If you want to see your dog thrive again, maybe you've got an older dog. They need a little bit of extra help. Rough Greens is there for you. All you got to do is go to roughgreens.com slash blaze. That is R-U-F-F greens.com slash blaze. All right, in Japan, uh, amusement parks around the country are now beginning to open up. You know, we, I, we've been talking this entire time about riots, uh, looting, protesting, Black Lives Matter. There was a thing called COVID-19 before all of this happened. I know it's hard to believe. Uh, the curve. Yeah, we, we did it. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, we could actually flatten the curve. And so uh, amusement parks opening back up in Japan. Um, they've got a set of guidelines for reopening, which includes obviously any, everything you would expect, right? Body temperature checks, uh, increased sanitization pr- procedures, uh, and they have to wear face masks, which I'm not too sure how you do that. Um, I know Universal and Disney are doing the same things because we had to delay our summer trip. We were going to go to Universal, and I'm like, I'm not wearing a freaking face mask outside to go ride roller coasters. <laughs> How are you going to keep on a face mask when you're riding a roller coaster? I don't know. But one of the other suggestions that they have is to avoid shouting or cheering when you're at this amusement park. So no screaming, uh, no cheering, and this will not bring infections to zero, but it will reduce the risk of infection. How? How? I don't know what planet we're living on. Have you ever been to an amusement park? Have you ever gone on it? First of all, they put these rides together back in the 60s, right? Do you can not hear tell them me creaking. anything that's going to make me I mean, scared because hey, I already am scared. About to be ruined. You yeah. go in there already, and they got, it's hard for me. It's the nastiest place. There's gum from 1987 <laughs> stuck to the pavement. Your kid's down there licking it. You got the I nastiest stuff going in there. I'm telling you, you go in there. And it, 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 they still have troughs on the wall to pee in for the men. Uh, you women, maybe. I don't know. The nastiest places. And women's bathrooms are way nastier than men's. But y'all gonna go, you worrying about COVID? Worrying about COVID? That's a great point. 
That's a great point. Look at that. Look, look, every one of them's got their mouth wide open, breathing coronavirus on this picture you're showing right here. Every one of them's got their mouth open. I'm wondering, Josh, if this whole, I mean, it, all of it is horrible. The, the death of George Floyd, obviously horrible, should not have happened. Um, but I'm wondering if, if all of these amusement parks, at least even here, will have this renewed sense of like what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Because a couple weeks ago, like I mentioned, Universal, Disney, they're all coming out with their plans to reopen. Universal's checking body temperatures. If you have 100.4 or above, after you've stood in line in Florida waiting to get your body temperature <laughs> checked, you got to go and you got to go to the doctor and bring a doctor's note. So I'm wondering if they're going to keep all up all of these guidelines now that it like no one cares anymore. Yeah, you know, I find it so amusing the go on a roller coaster but don't scream thing. I mean, <laughs> like, go to this fun activity and try to have fun, Sit but there, don't like, emote yeah, and yeah. express that you're having the fun. The whole point of riding a roller coaster is it's exhilarating and yeah, you got to exactly. let it out, right? Um, so this is going on in Japan, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I've been to Japan twice, actually. Um, I'm somewhat of a Japanophile. It's one of my weird quirks, actually. I love, <laughs> love Japanese culture, love the Japanese people, love Japanese food, love, love, love everything about it. Japan is very interesting. It is one of the most uh, hierarchical, ordered, law-abiding societies you'll ever see in the entire world. No one crosses the street on the subway. They all line up single file in line. And actually, prior to this whole COVID mess in, in, in Japan, as with many Asian cultures, it was actually fairly normal to wear masks around the street because they had the mm -hmm. SARS epidemics mm -hmm. from years ago and things of that nature. So. I say that just to kind of contextualize and say that, like when we hear something like this in Japan, it's not going to like raise alarm bells. The people there are not going to like hear the same way that we in America, where we have this kind of overarching ethos of individual liberty and we kind of have that whole declaration of independence and constitution and things like that. That's probably just not going to resonate for Japanese amusement park goers. Yeah. So I expect that they will still go there in, in, in flocks and they will still have a darn good time. Um, I, don't I, show it though. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> don't show right. it. You better not show it. Aaron, we got about 30 seconds. Uh, walking around an amusement park wearing a mask, I would pass out. I've I worn know. a mask a couple of times through this thing in a store and I get a headache every time because my breathing is restricted and it's just, I can't imagine being out on a 100 degree day riding roller coasters, walking around all day with a mask. I wouldn't make it. And I think we're going to see, if we do that here in America, we're going to see a lot of uh, out of shape people passing out in yeah. Disney World because That's they're not prepared point. to do that. I'll be, we'll be interested to see. Like There's I said, we, we actually, we were planning <laughs> planning on going, uh, making our trip, it ends up the week that they are coming back, that they are returning, that they are reopening the park. So it'll be interesting to see how many people actually show up and deal with that mess. All I know is it ain't going to be me. All right, back in a minute. I was just like, absolutely not. I mean, oh, they could yeah. be like, come for free. Yeah. I, wouldn't, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have. Absolutely not. No, hot those mess. All right, uh, you, let's see. Today's poll, are you satisfied with how President Trump has responded to the riots, looting, and violence on America's streets? Let us know. I know there was a time period where he was... He did not come out. He did not give any sort of statement, at least publicly. I know he still had his Twitter, which he never leaves. But uh, he had not spoken publicly. He finally did it yesterday. Chad, what are your quick thoughts? Yesterday I said I was disappointed in the president. Today I say I'm very happy with the response. I like what he did yesterday. It was a show of leadership. All right, Josh, I know you alluded to the fact that you were happy with, with what he had to say yesterday. I thought it was a great speech. Uh, I, I, you know, I have some mixed thoughts on what happened after the speech. I'm generally supportive of it, certainly. The speech itself was great. I don't know yeah. why it didn't happen sooner, though. Yeah, that's my thing, Speeches too. Speeches instead of tweets is always my preference for the president, but, you know, I'm not going to get that, probably. So. It, well, and it's interesting because, you know, there is a certain subset of uh, people, namely in the media, who are going to say, I mean, he's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't, right? Like, they, he's being accused with the coronavirus lockdowns, he should have shut everyone down quicker, and now he's being accused of being a fascist because he's saying that if you guys don't get your acts together, we're going to bring in the National Guard. He can't win. Well, he damn well better do it the way I think he ought to do it. <laughs> Damn it, it does, up right damn it if you don't, but right. I want it. Damn, I got an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Donnie. And uh, don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed to the Chad Prather podcast, Chad Prather show. Do that this is the most emotional week of shows we're doing. Yeah. I'm telling you, there, there's some hardcore conversation going on in these shows this week. Well, you, but you're also, I mean, you're fun, though. Don't tell them to come for, like, the crying. No, we got to, we got to. Fu Manchu Red. Did now. you cry? I ain't watching now. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I ain't never cried in my oh, life. Don't get him started on that. <laughs>